welcome to my channel, I'm Jordan, and before I get into today's video, I have to address some things. Um, I'm sure that you all have been glued to social media and the news and everything like I have been these past couple weeks, and it would not feel right going on business as usual and just posting a video without saying something. Uh, about my thoughts and about what I've been doing and what I think you can do um, and obviously I'm talking about the Black Lives Matter movement. If you are somehow not familiar, um, I think exactly one week ago when I'm filming this, a black man named George Floyd was killed by a police officer on the street for no reason and as they should be, people are outraged and this was something that just really brought a magnifying glass to the issues that black people face in our country and it's showing people that it's not enough to just intrinsically believe that black lives matter and that we should treat people with equality but that we actually have to do something and so I've been very vocal on my Twitter about uh, donating and about signing petitions and about listening to the black creators in our community and I would urge you to look not only at my Twitter but at what everybody else is putting out especially like I said those black voices because they've been oppressed for too long I don't think we're gonna get out of this without change at least I hope that that's true and I hope that I can be a small part of the movement but more than that I hope that I can share if you haven't been introduced to the ways that you can help yet that I can help introduce you to those resources so I will have links below other than that, it is June now, so happy Pride Month! Sending all my love to all of the LGBTQIA people who follow me and watch me. Happy Pride Month! So, now I think I can finally get into my May wrap-up. I read nine books in May, which I'm really happy with, and I would also say it was a really good quality reading month, and I'm really happy about that. Of the nine books that I read, I had no one stars, I only had one two star, and then I had four three stars, two four stars, and two five star books. So a lot of books that I really, really enjoyed this month, and as far as formats go, I read uh, three books that I own and that I read physically, uh, one book that I own but I listened to it on audio, two books I listened to on audio and I don't own them, and three I read in ebook format and those were all arcs that I got through NetGalley. So I will get into each book. I'm just going to go ahead and throw the picture up of the book title instead of uh, getting the ones that I own down. I think you can just see it better when I'm sitting this far away. Um, so actually I think I'll scoot over a little bit and make some room. So the first four books that I'll talk about are books that I read as part of a new series on my channel which is the Celebrity Book Club series. I will link that video if it's already up. I haven't decided yet um, about what order I'm uploading videos but for that I read four books that have been chosen for Reese Witherspoon's book club. The first one that I read is Something in the Water by Katherine Steadman. This is a thriller that I definitely think is best if you don't know really anything going in. The back of the book has a very vague synopsis which basically says that it's this man and a woman who just got married. They're on their honeymoon in Bora Bora and they go scuba diving and they find something in the water. And I thought that this book was extremely suspenseful. It was well done and I really wanted to get to the end of the book to know what happened. Unfortunately the ending was a little lackluster for me. It didn't totally satisfy me and I ended up giving it three stars but I would recommend it to people who like thrillers. I think it was a good suspenseful thriller. I also read The Lion Game by Ruth Ware. This is another thriller. I've read a few of Ruth Ware's thriller so far and this was my least favorite unfortunately. This follows a group of girls who were who attended an all-female boarding school and some things happened. They had some secrets and now we're following them like 10 or 15 years into the future when they're back for a reunion and you know some of those secrets get uncovered. This one was just it just felt very low stakes the whole time. I didn't believe that these girls were in danger now for something they did that meant that long ago. It just didn't provide any reason for me to really be invested in these characters. So unfortunately that was a three star. I also read Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This is a contemporary book that follows this woman named Amira. She's a black woman and she babysits for a white family and at the start of the book she is taking the white blonde toddler um, to a grocery store to kill some time and Amira gets confronted by the security guard at that grocery store and accused of basically stealing this child because she's a black girl with a white toddler and people think that it doesn't look right. And it goes from there. So obviously from that synopsis you can tell that it deals with some pretty heavy race issues and I really enjoyed reading that book and learning about this experience that Amira goes through and that too many black people have had to deal with, um, you know, the profiling, the judgment, 
and the being confronted and almost arrested for something that is not wrong in the slightest. And I think the story was well done. I was very invested in these characters. And again, just great discussion about race and privilege. I think it even could have gone further, so I ended up giving it four stars, but highly recommend um, to all kinds of readers. And then the last book that I read for this video was Whisper Network by Chandler Baker. This is categorized as a thriller on Goodreads, but it's much more of like a drama mystery. There is a little bit of a mystery element to it, but it's definitely not like heart-pounding page-turner thriller. This follows a group of women who are in the legal department for a company and find out that their CEO has suddenly died and this man is up to become the next CEO and they're not very happy about that because this man has done some problematic things and they basically want to get that out in the open. Um, definitely trigger warnings I would say in this book for suicide and also sexual harassment. Uh, sexual harassment is a big topic in this book and I really it's weird to say I enjoyed it, but I think that it was really well done. I really liked seeing the workplace dynamics that these women are going through, and I could relate to a lot of things that they talked about just in the way that women are treated differently in the workplace, especially, you know, mothers versus fathers. And like the beginning scene of this book is around one of the women inside of a lactation room while she's pumping during the workday. And that's just something that I've never read about in a book before, but it's something that I've personally experienced. So I really liked seeing that. Um, and I thought that it had some really good commentary about those dynamics. As far as the mystery goes, I thought it was very lacking. I feel like it could have either leaned all the way in in being a mystery thriller or it just kind of backed off on the mystery plotline and just made it a drama or just a hard-hitting contemporary. And it's done kind of a courtroom way. They're not actually in a courtroom. I think they're just talking back and forth with lawyers and doing interviews and stuff, but it still reads very courtroom drama like and so I think that may turn off some readers too although I didn't necessarily dislike the format of that I didn't like that it was kind of trying to be a mystery when it really wasn't so overall I rated this book three stars all right then I have a couple of really great books to talk about so the next book that I read was with the fire on high by Elizabeth Acevedo this is a book that I had heard a ton about I've heard a lot of buzz on booktube but I never picked it up and I don't know why um, but I was looking for an audiobook one day and this came up on I think Scribd and so I decided to listen to it and this was excellent. This is a YA book about a girl in high school who has a daughter and is trying to kind of figure out where her life is going to go when she graduates high school and she's very into cooking and she might want to go to culinary school and she's just figuring all that out. and. This was fantastic. Um, I absolutely loved the main character. I thought she was incredibly mature for being a high schooler and I guess that kind of goes with the fact that she was a high schooler with a child. Um, I loved the dynamic that she had with her daughter. I thought, you know, I could definitely relate to her on a mom aspect, but it also went into racial dynamics and that's something that I absolutely can't relate to. And so it was really interesting to read about that and I um, really enjoyed this main character and just the story altogether. So definitely, definitely recommend this book if you have not read it yet. And I'm very excited to get to Acevedo's latest release, Clap When You Land. I think that one also looks really good. So I'm definitely planning to pick that one up soon. And then I read an amazing thriller, which was What Lies Between Us by John Mars. And this is basically about two women who are living in one house, but one woman is trapped there and we don't know why. And that's all I'm going to tell you. I didn't even know that. I don't think going into the story and it was amazing. This book gave me major behind closed doors. Fives by B.A. Paris, if you read that thriller, that's one of my favorites. This reminded me of that just because it's kind of pushing the limits of where people can go and how you never really know someone and it uncovers the past about these two women. There's a ton of twists, there's a ton of suspense. Um, it's amazing. So one of my new all-time favorite books. I've heard great things about John Mars and now I'm very excited to read more from him. I've heard that his other books like The One and I think The Passengers, super hyped and now I'm a believer I'm definitely going to check those out. The next book that I read is I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid and this is again I think I was looking for an audiobook to listen to and this came up and I've heard it talked about a little bit but not nearly enough. This is a horror, kind of a thriller horror about uh, this couple where the girlfriend is going to the boyfriend's 
family's house for the first time and it kind of follows them on the drive there and while they're there just weird creepy things happen and then when they leave more creepy things happen and I don't think even by the synopsis you have any idea what you're getting into. Uh, this was definitely my first experience listening to an audiobook and being somewhat scared about what was going to happen and actually you know getting my heart pumping and beating and like I said scared about <laughs> about what I was reading or listening to and I super enjoyed it and it's definitely one of those books that I think you will either love or hate the ending. I definitely looked into like theories about what the ending meant because I think that that helps a lot in just understanding the whole story and understanding maybe what the author was going for and what you're supposed to think and feel after the end and so definitely recommend that if you're interested in looking more into the meaning of the book after you finish it. I think I went to the website after things end com or something like that I'll link it but it was really cool to see people's theories about the book and I believe this book is becoming a movie on Netflix or something soon and so I'm definitely excited to watch that I think this will make a great movie the next book is called what you wish for by Catherine Center and this is a contemporary book Catherine Center I think has two other contemporary books at least with like the same sort of looking cover so at least her like three most recent books I've read all of them now and this was unfortunately my least favorite so this is about a woman who is a teacher and the principal of her teacher dies and a new man comes in uh, to be the new principal and it's someone from her past life who she's kind of trying to get away from and also he's doing not so great changes to the school and so people are not very happy um, about the situation and I'm trying to remember why exactly I didn't like it and maybe that is kind of a good indicator that I read it near the end of the month and I still don't really remember much about it I think that the characters maybe are just too characterized like this bad guy you're hit in the head with the fact that he's bad and this girl you're hit in the head with the fact that she's whimsical and weird and stuff like that and it just I don't think it needed to be that way I think it could have been a little bit more subtle or nuanced I also think it was kind of obvious where it was going and why this bad guy was doing the things that he was doing I think you could guess it pretty early on um, and I don't think it was necessarily supposed to be a twist but there was obviously a reason she was withholding the author was withholding the information to like the end of the book and I just don't think it paid off quite as much as she thought it would. I'm still grateful for the opportunity to have read this book. I did read it early on NetGalley and I will be keeping an eye out for some of Catherine Center's future books just because I have liked her uh, other works. But I rated this one two stars. And then the last book that I read this month is called Again Again by E. Lockhart and this is a YA book that follows this high school girl as she kind of meets this guy at a dog park and they kind of start a relationship I guess and this one is very interesting it's very different from anything that I've ever read definitely different from any young adult book that I've ever read uh, it's written very like poetically and lyrically and um, it has you know interesting formatting at least the arc that I read did and I think that some people will definitely enjoy that and it does some things with like I don't know if it's necessarily supposed to be like alternate realities but it has to do with like different decisions and if conversations would have gone different ways. Um, I don't know, it was just kind of an interesting, confusing sort of book for me. I think that for the right reader it'll defini definitely connect. I would not be surprised if someone read this book and said that it was their new all-time favorite. I definitely won't write off E. Lockhart. I actually have uh, We Were Liars right here. Uh, by her but I have not read that yet but I've heard good things so I definitely want to read that uh, but I gave this one three stars that's not to say it was a bad book it just didn't do the things for me that I think that it can do for other readers and all right that is it for my May wrap up I'm very excited to get into June I have a lot of reading plans planned I hope that all of you guys are safe and healthy and um, I'm not even gonna say I hope you're doing well because I know that a lot of people right now aren't doing well But I stand by you. I hear you. I support you I will continue doing everything that I can do to Incite change and I hope that all of you guys watching will as well. So with that I don't think I have anything else So thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video